What's up YouTube? Jay here with Tap and Turn Gaming coming at you with another Cons of Tarkir intro pack unboxing. This video we will be taking a look at my personal favorite clan from this set, the Mardu with the Mardu Raiders intro pack. So let's take a look quickly at the uh, premium foil card here. We got an ankle shanker. Um, we'll take a look at him in more depth once we get this unboxed, but let's flip it around here and take a look at the back. You got a picture of, of Ankle Shanker here. Uh, I'm not going to read this, it's the same on every intro pack, but let's take a look at the little paragraph here for Mardu Raiders. Uh, the Mardu charge straight into their foes, relying on speed and numbers to conquer the battlefield. Claim the spoils you deserve when your horde ru uh, rushes to victory. Excuse me, can't speak today. Um, and then the contents, same as always with all the other ones. You have the 60 card deck featuring a foil premium card, in this case, Ankle Shanker. Uh, you get two cons of Tarkir booster packs, a deck strategy insert, and a rules reference card. So, without further ado, let's crack it open and see what the Mardu Raiders deck has to offer us. So here you have the deck with your foil ankle shanker. Inside this here you have your two cons of Tarkir booster packs. And then you have your deck strategy insert and your rules reference card. So let's take a look at Ankle Shanker. Uh, he is a 5 cost 2 2 with haste. Uh, whenever he attacks, creatures you control gain first strike and death touch until end of turn. Um, I'm very interested in building a Zergo Helm Smasher EDH deck, and if I do this, ca this card is going straight in the deck. I think it's a really, really good card. Um, especially if you like playing aggressive style decks where you're always turning your dude sideways. Um, turning this dude sideways gives all your other dudes first strike and death touch. So essentially anything that goes to combat with any of those creatures is just instantly going to die. Insta death. Uh, but let's crack this open and take a look at what the rest of this deck has to offer us. Okay, so again, there's your foil ankle shanker. Uh, here you have a Crackling Doom. It's a three cost instant, uh, deals two damage to each opponent. Each opponent sacrifices a creature with the greatest power among creatures he or she controls. Uh, definitely not a bad card at all. Pretty good, actually. Um, being able to shock each opponent and then make them have to sacrifice their biggest, meanest creature, basically. Um, is definitely pretty good, I think. Next we have a Firehoof Cavalry. It's a 1 cost 1-1. One, one. Uh, you can pay 3 colorless and a red to give it plus 2 plus 0 and give it trample until end of turn. So not too bad. Alright, here we have a Mardu Hate Blade. It's a 1 cost 1-1 one, one, where you can pay a black and it gains Death Touch. Uh, probably one of the more impressive commons that I've seen. From this set. Uh, here's some core set cards, not really going to talk about them, but I'll just say what they are. Here we have a Borderland Marauder. We got another one of that. Uh, here's a Valley Dasher. It's a 2 cost 2-2 two, two with haste and it attacks each turn of Fable. Uh, here we have a War Name Aspirant. It's a 2 cost 2-1 two, with the Mardu ability Raid. Um, basically, Raid is whenever you um, if you attacked with a creature in your turn, it triggers this creature's raid ability when you cast it. Um, so, War Name Aspirant enters the battle um, enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it if you attacked with a creature this turn, and it can't be blocked except by creatures. Sorry, it cannot be blocked by creatures with power one or less. So. Uh, if you attack with a, at least one creature during your turn, then you cast this during your second main phase. It'll come in as a 3-2 that can't be blocked by creatures with power 1 or less, so not too bad. And we have another one of that. Here we have a Gurmag Swiftwing. It's a 2 cost 1-2 with flying, first strike, and haste. 
Uh, here's a Mardu Skull Hunter. It's a two cost two one. Uh, it enters the battlefield tapped, um, and it has raid. Uh, whenever it enters the battlefield, if you attack with a creature this turn, target opponent discards a card. Here we have another one of that. Some more corset stuff here. We have a Goblin Rough Rider, another Goblin Rough Rider. Uh, Mardu Horde Chief, it's a 3 cost 2-3 two, with raid. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, if you attacked with a creature this turn, put a 1-1 one, one white warrior creature token onto the battlefield. I like dudes that bring other dudes to the party, so that's pretty cool. And here we get another one of him. Uh, here's a Carrion Crow, another corset card, another corset card, Necrogen Scudder. Uh, here we have Mardu War Shrieker. It's a 4 cost 3 3 with raid. When it enters the battlefield, if you attack with a creature this turn, add red, white, black to your mana pool. So that's pretty cool. There's another one of him. Uh, here we have a Timely Horde Mate. 4 cost 3 2 with raid. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, if you attack with a creature this turn, return target creature card with converted mana cost 2 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So that's pretty cool. Uh, creatures that are able to res other creatures from the yard directly into play is always nice. Uh, here we have a Mardu Rough Rider. It's a 5 cost 5 4 whenever it attacks. Uh, target creature can't block this turn. Uh, and here we have some of the lands in the deck. Uh, here we have one of the gain life lands, uh, Bloodfell Caves. Taps are black and red. Uh, here's the Mardu three color land nomad outpost comes to play tapped taps are a red white or a black here You have two of that another gain life land scurred barons Windscarred crag another gain life land now you got some of the basic lands mountains plains and swamps Should Rip through those real quick uh, Here we have a crippling blight a lightning strike a raise the alarm a Mardu Banner, uh, three cost artifact. You can tap it for a red, white, or a black, or you can pay a red, white, and a black and tap it and sacrifice it to draw a card. Here you have a Trumpet Blast, three cost red instance. Attacking creatures get plus two, plus zero oh until end of turn. I believe that's a reprint, actually. Uh, here we have a Hordling Outburst. It's a three cost red sorcery. Put three 1 1 red goblin creature tokens onto the battlefield. That's not too bad. Uh, here's the Mardu Charm. Uh, three cost instant. You get to choose one of the following uh, Mardu Charm deals four damage to target creature. Put two 1 1 white warrior creature tokens onto the battlefield. They gain first strike until end of turn. Or target opponent reveals his or her hand, you choose a non-creature, non-land card from it, that player discards that card. So, pretty solid modes on this card. Uh, here we have a Bring Low, it's a 4 cost red instant, deals 3 damage to target creature. If that creature has a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it, Bring Low deals 5 damage to it instead. Um, so that seems like... Uh, a specific card just to hate on somebody that's playing Abzan. Um, so that's kind of funny, actually, but not a bad card. Uh, here we have a Smite the Monstrous. Four cost, white instant, destroy target creature with power four or greater. Arrow Storm. Five cost, red sorcery. It deals four damage to target creature or player. Um, with raid, if you attack with a creature this turn... Uh, instead, Arrow Storm deals 5 damage to that creature or player, and the damage can't be prevented. Um, so that's pretty cool. We have a Flesh to Dust, and a Heat Ray. So that concludes the Mardu Raiders pre-constructed deck overall. You know, some pretty solid stuff in it overall. Um... Just to quickly look at the two rares again, we got the Foil Ankle Shanker and the Crackling Doom that came in the deck. But next, let's take a look at the two booster packs that we got inside this intro pack. So here's number one, and let's crack it open and see what we get. I'm just going to rip right through these commons and uncommons. And probably just get straight to the rare, which is a Mantis Rider. 
Uh, it's a three cost three three with flying vigilance and haste. Um, it's a Jess guy card. Uh, not too impressive. And you get a island and an insert card. Okay, so in our first booster pack, we got a Mantis Rider. Let's grab pack number two and see what we pull here. Come on, something good, something good. A Utter End, yes. This is a really, really good card. Uh, four cost, white and black, instant, exile, target, non-land, permanent. Um, I want this card for every deck, every EDH deck that is, that runs white and black. This card is just amazing. Um, basically a Vindicate that costs one more, but it exiles the permanent. Um, granted, it's a non-land permanent, but, I mean... A four cost instant that exiles a non land permanent is really, really good. And then you have uh, planes and you have a Sarkin emblem. Okay, so that pretty much concludes the unboxing of this Mardu Raiders intro pack from Kanza Tark here. Um, I'm pretty pleased with that utter end that I pulled in the second booster pack. That's a really, really good card. Um, and the other rare we got was a Mantis Rider. But yeah, uh, that pretty much sums everything up here. What's up, guys? Jay here with Tap and Turn Gaming, coming at you with another Cons of Tarkir intro pack unboxing. Uh, this video will take a look at the Teamer Avalanche intro pack. Um, as far as I can tell from the uh, feedback that I've been getting from the set, the Teamer are one of the more popular clans. Um, they appear to be, they will be very viable and standard. Um, that doesn't really appeal too much to me because I'm an EDH player mostly. But, uh, you know, it's interesting to see some of the feedback that people are uh, talking about with this clan. And they appear to be one of the more popular ones. Um, so yeah, let's uh, just take a quick glance at the uh, foil card here, which is an Avalanche Tusker. Uh, we'll take a closer look at him once we unbox this. Let's take a look at the back here. Um, not going to read this, it's the same on every pack, but let's take a look at the little uh, blurb for Teamer Avalanche. The Teamer embody the claws out savagery of the wild frontier. Crush the weaker clans under a landslide of brutal warriors toughened by ice, meat, and ferocious magic. And, you know, as always, the contents. You have a 60-card deck, obviously, uh, with the foil premium card. You have two cons of Tarkir booster packs, a deck strategy insert, and a rules reference card. So, without further ado, let's crack it open. And let's take a look at what the Teamer Avalanche deck has to offer us. So here you have the 60 card deck. Inside this little guy here you have your two cons of Tarkir booster packs. Here's your deck strategy insert. Not really going to take a look at it. Uh, just a list of all the cards in the deck and a strategy on how you should play this pre-constructed deck. And here's your rules reference card. Okay, so let's take a look at Avalanche Tusker. He is a 5 cost, 6-4. Uh, Whenever he attacks, target creature, defending player controls, blocks at this combat if able. So that's actually uh, not too bad, where you can essentially, you know, if your opponent has a weaker creature on the board, um, that you just want to get out of the way or something that's doing something static and you know it can't survive combat with this creature just pick it and make that creature block this creature when it attacks um, so it's a pretty good uh, path clearing card I mean as far as I can tell but uh, yeah that's Avalanche Tusker but let's uh, crack the deck open and see what else it has to offer us Okay, so there's your foil avalanche Tusker. Uh, here's an Icy Blast. Uh, it's a one cost blue instant with an X cost. 
tap X target creatures. And if you're ferocious, basically, um, this card, you know, the ferocious ability uh, will make the card do something more if you control a creature with power 4 or greater. Um, at least from an EDH standpoint, that's very easy to do. Uh, but if you're ferocious, if you control a creature with power 4 or greater, those creatures don't untap during their next untap steps. So, if you're not ferocious, this simply taps creatures, but if you are ferocious, uh, it makes it so that they don't untap during their controller's next untap step. So, not too bad. Uh, here's some core set cards. You've got an Elvish Mystic. you got another Elvish Mystic. Uh, Air of the Wilds. It's a 2 cost 2-2 two -two with Death Touch, and if you're ferocious, um, it gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. Actually, no, I'm sorry. Whenever it attacks, if you control a creature with power 4 or greater, it gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. So, I mean, a 2-2 two -two with Death Touch uh, isn't bad for 2 mana, uh, but, you know, a creature that can potentially be a 3-3 three -three with Death Touch when it attacks, uh, if you are ferocious, is not too bad at all. We have another one of him. Uh, another core set card, a Rune Claw Bear. Another Rune Claw Bear. Uh, here we have an Ice Feather Aven. It's a 2 cost 2-2 two -two flyer with Morph for a colorless, a green, and a blue. Uh, and when it is turned face up, you may return another target creature to its owner's hand. Um, so essentially when you morph it, it bounces a creature to someone's hand. Not too bad. Uh, here we have an Alpine Grizzly. Uh, 3 cost 4-2. Just a vanilla 4-2 creature. Another one of that. Uh, a Summit Prowler, a 4 cost 4 3 vanilla dude. Another one of him. Uh, here we have a Pine Walker. It's a 5 cost 5 5 with morph for 4 colorless and a green. Um, and when it's. Uh, sorry, whenever Pine Walker or another creature you control is turned face up, untap that creature. Not too bad, I suppose. Here we have a Thundering Giant. Uh, another core set card. Don't care too much about those. Uh, here's a Bear's Companion. It's a 5 cost 2-2. Two, two. When it enters the battlefield, put a 4-4 four, four green bear creature token onto the battlefield. So, not too bad. A uh, a creature that brings a creature with him is uh, you know always pretty good. Um, so, essentially, for 5 mana, you're you know getting six uh, six power on the board so that's not too bad at all here we have a glacial stalker it's a six cost four five with morph for four colorless and a blue um, doesn't do anything cool when it's turned face up it's essentially just a vanilla creature um, so essentially if you pay this face you know pay three colorless and play this face down as a two two dude you can morph it up for five mana for to be a four five dude but it doesn't do anything cool when it gets turned face up so that's kind of underwhelming uh, another one of that uh, a tusked colossodon a six cost six five just a vanilla dude there's a lot of vanilla dudes in this deck it's kind of disappointing honestly uh, here we have a Snowhorn Rider. He's a 6 cost 5-5 five, five with Trample that you can morph for 2 colorless, a green, a blue, and a red. Um, so, I mean, you know, this also doesn't do anything when it's turned face up. But, I mean, I guess you could kind of catch your opponents off guard. You know, you know, oh, I'll, you know, play this face down for, you know, 3 as a 2-2 two, two dude. You don't know what it is, and then you can morph it up morph it uh, face up at any time, you know, and catch your opponents off guard because um, they don't know what it is, but generally I like creatures with morph that, you know, do something when they turn uh, turn face up, but this is another card that does nothing when it's turned face up. And there's another one of it. Here's another creature that does nothing when it's turned face up, a Woolly Loxodon. It's a 7 cost 6-7 with morph for 5 colors and a green. Um, I mean, this is pretty disappointing, honestly. I mean, you know, if you play this face down for three mana, you know, you're investing that three mana for a 2-2 two -two creature, and then you have to invest six mana to actually make it into, you know, what you see here. So, I mean, you're essentially investing more mana to get a 6-7 on the board than you would if you just hard casted it. But, you know, like I said, you can catch your opponents off guard if you morph it. Um, you know, oh, 
they're like, oh, I'll attack you with a, you know, a 6-6, six, six. and you're like, oh, well, I'll morph this face up and block, it's a 6-7, your dude dies, and mine doesn't, so, I mean, I guess it's not too bad, I just, again, I just like stuff that when it morphs and you turn it face up, it does something cool. There's another Wooly Loxodon. Uh, here we're into some of the lands. Here's the uh, the Teamer uh, three call land, a Frontier Bivaku. I don't even know how to pronounce that, so I apologize if I pronounced it wrong. Uh, but it you know produces green, blue, or red, and it comes in a play tapped. And you have a second one of that. Now you got some of the gained life lands. Uh, here is Rugged Highlands produces red and green, or red or green rather, a Swiftwater Cliffs, a Thornwood Falls, now you get some basics here, just rip through those, basic forest, basic island, basic mountains. <laughs> now let's take a look at the rest of the cards in the deck, here we have a Stubborn Denial, it's a one cost blue instant, counter target non-creature spell, once its controller pays, one colorless. Or if you're ferocious, you just counter the spell entirely. Um, so, I mean, that's pretty good. Um, it only counters a non-creature spell, but essentially a one-cost counter spell. Um, you know, if you control a creature with power four or greater, it just straight up counters it instead of uh, countering it unless they pay one. So, not too bad. Here we have a Savage Punch. It's a two-cost green sorcery. Target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. And if you're ferocious, the creature you control gets plus two, plus two until end of turn before it fights the creature. So, not too bad. There's another one of that. Uh, another core set card, Titanic Growth. Uh, here's Force Away. It's a two-cost blue instant return target creature to its owner's hand. And if you're ferocious... Uh, you may draw a card, and if you do, discard a card. So, if you're ferocious, you get to bounce a creature, and then draw a card, then discard a card. Here's a lightning strike. Uh, here's the teamer banner. Um, three cost artifact. You can tap it for a green, blue, or a red, or you can pay a green, blue, and a red and tap it and sack it to draw a card. Here's another one of that. Uh, Roar of Challenge. It's a three cost green sorcery. All creatures able to block target creature this turn do so. Uh, and if you're ferocious, uh, the creature that creature gains indestructible until end of turn. So that's uh, pretty, pretty good, I think. Um, you can essentially use this to alpha strike your opponent because all their creatures have to block a single creature. Um, you know, and if you're ferocious, the creature that they all block is indestructible. So pretty cool card, I think. Here we have a Dragon Grip, it's a 3 cost red aura. Um, enchanted creature gets plus 2 plus 0 and has first strike. If you're ferocious, uh, you may cast Dragon Grip as though it had flash. So, not too bad. Here's the Teamer Charm. Um, 3 cost instant, uh, you get to choose one of the following. Target creature you control gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. It fights target creature you don't control. Counter target spell unless its controller pays three colorless or creatures with power three or less can't block this turn. Um, so some pretty interesting modes there. Um, you know, potential creature removal, potential disruption, and potential alpha striking. Um, you know, on this card. So definitely not bad card. Here we have a windstorm. Uh, one cost green instant with an X cost. Uh, deals X damage to each creature with flying. Okay, so that is it for the Teamer um, pre-con deck from this intro pack. Honestly, pretty underwhelming. I mean, there's just a lot of creatures in this deck that are just vanilla creatures that don't do anything. Or vanilla morph creatures that don't do anything. Just to kind of you know, point him out again, um, you know, Wooly Loxodon, he's just, he's just a, a seven cost six seven, uh, you know, or if you morph him for five colors and a green, you know, but he doesn't do anything cool when he gets turned face up, so you get two of him, you get two Snowhorn Riders, just basically a vanilla six cost five five with Trample with morph for five instead of hard casting it for six, you know, again, doesn't do anything when it's turned face up. 
Here you have a vanilla six cost six five with no morph. Uh, you have a you know a vanilla four five for six that can morph, but it does nothing when it's turned face up. I mean, you get the bear's companion. That's pretty cool. Um, see, you know these are the kind of cards I like to see. You know, whenever Pine Walker or another creature you control is turned face up, untap that creature. You know, it does something when it's turned face up. Here you have. You know, two more vanilla dudes, just, you know, two four-cost four threes that do nothing. They're just vanilla dudes. You know, vanilla three-cost four twos. I mean, you know, you got some core set cards in here that are just vanilla dudes. You know, Runeclaw Bear. Um, you know, least, least Elvish Mystic Taps for mana. I mean, just overall, it's a pretty underwhelming pre-constructed deck. Just a lot of vanilla cards that don't really do anything but anyway um let's take a look at the two booster packs and let's crack this first one open and see what we pull hoping something good <clears throat> just gonna rip through these commons real quick i mean i'll stop briefly just to show you real quick what they are for the most part, just going to get right to the rare, which is a Teamer Ascendancy. Uh, fitting that it came in the Teamer deck. Uh, it's a three cost enchantment. Creatures you control have haste. Uh, whenever a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. That's a pretty good enchantment. Um, this would be really good in EDH. Um, you know, stuff that gives your creatures haste is always really good. Uh, but being able to get that and potential card advantage is really good. You know, and then you just get a forest and you get a Sarkin emblem. Um, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so in our first, fir uh, excuse me, first booster pack, we pulled a Teamer Ascendancy. So let's take a look at the second booster pack and see what we pull here. Again, just gonna quickly rip through these cards. Just get straight to the rare for the most part. And that is a Ankle Shanker. Um, it's a five cost two two with haste. Uh, whenever he attacks, creatures you control gain first strike and death touch until end of turn. Really, really good, I think. Um, obviously a Mardu card. Um, I'm actually interested in building a EDH deck with Zergo Helm Smasher, so this card would probably go right into that deck. Um, but yeah, there's a Ankle Shanker in our second booster pack. And then a Mountain and a... Oh, this appears to be a token if you morph, or if you play something that has morph face down for three colorless mana. So that's pretty cool, actually. Okay, so that is our second booster pack, and in that we pulled an Ankle Shanker. But that pretty much concludes this unboxing for the Teamer Avalanche intro pack. What's up, YouTube? Jay here with Tap and Turn Gaming, and I'm coming at you with another intro pack of Cons of Tarkir unboxing video. Uh, this video will take a look at the Jeskai Monks intro pack. Uh, so let's take a look at the front and center card here, the foil, uh, which is a Sage of the Inward Eye. Uh, we'll take a look at him more once I actually get this opened up. And we'll flip this around, take a look at the back here. Um, just gonna read the little uh, blurb for Jeskai Monks. The Jeskai use their cunning and their knowledge of mystical arts to defeat their foes. Your monks will blast the other clans with a flurry of combat moves they will never see coming. So, uh, as far as the contents go, you know, same as all the other ones. You get the 60 card deck, you get the foil premium sage of the inward eye, two cons of Tarkir booster packs, a deck strategy insert, and a rules reference card. So, without further ado, let's crack this open and let's take a look at what this deck has to offer. And then after that, we will crack open the two booster packs. <clears throat> so, 
So here's the uh, 60 card deck. Inside here you have your two cons of Tarkir booster packs. You've got your deck strategy insert. Not really gonna look at this really. I mean all it is is just it gives you kind of a synopsis of the deck. Uh, the list of the cards in it and how you should play it basically. Um, and here's your rules reference card. So if you're new to Magic the Gathering and you don't know how to play, this will uh, teach you the basics. So let's take a look at the deck first, uh, and let's take a look at Sage of the Inward Eye. He's a 5 cost, 3-4 Dijin Wizard with flying. Uh, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, creatures you control gain lifelink until end of turn. So, I mean, that's not too bad. Um, honestly, I think the Jeskai ability prowess is probably the most underwhelming out of the five clans. But, you know, maybe we'll see some interesting, uh, you know, decks that uh, take advantage of that ability. Um, so let's crack this open and see what else this deck has to offer. So we've already looked at Sage of the Inward Eye. Next up we have a Flying Crane Technique. It's a 6 cost instant 3 colorless, 1 blue, 1 red, and 1 white. To untap all creatures you control, they gain flying and double strike until end of turn. So uh, that's pretty solid. Next we get a Monastery Swift Spear. It's a 1 cost, 1, 2 with haste and prowess. Uh, here we have a Jeskai Elder. Uh, if you guys saw our Speed vs. Cunning unboxing deck, you saw this card. Uh, but it's just a one, uh, sorry, a two cost one two with prowess, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. And we have another of that. Uh, then we have a Leaping Master, a two cost two one, where you can pay two colorless and one white to give him flying. Uh, a Jeskai Student, a two cost one three with prowess. A Seeker of the Way, it's a 2 cost 2-2 two, two with prowess. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, Seeker of the Way gains lifelink until end of turn. Uh, so he's a pretty good uh, white weenie beater. We get another one of him. Uh, we get a Just Guy Wind Scout, 3 cost 2-1 flyer with prowess. A second one of that. A Bloodfire Expert, a 3 cost 3-1 three, with prowess. You get a second one of that. A Bloodfire Mentor, a 3 cost 05, where you can pay 2 colorless and a blue and tap him to draw a card, then discard a card. Here we have an Alabaster Kirin. It's a 4 cost 2 3 flyer with Vigilance. Uh, here's a High, High Spire Mantis. It's a 4 cost 3 3 with Flying and Trample. Here's a Whirlwind Adept, a 5 cost 4 2 with Hexproof and Prowess. Tireless Missionaries, which is, uh, that's, now we're into uh, some core set cards here, so I'm not really going to talk about those. You've probably seen these already. Uh, here we have a Sarah Angel. Uh, we have a Warden of the Eye. He is a 5 cost 3 3. When he enters the battlefield, return target non creature, non land card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, he's pretty good, actually, I think. I mean, he'll basically recur your instants, sorceries, and planeswalkers. Uh, base, basically spells and planeswalkers, so he's pretty solid, I think. Uh, here we have a River Wheel Aerialists, a 6 cost 4-5 with flying and prowess. Uh, now it looks like we're getting into some of the lands here. Here's the uh, the Jeskai three color land, Mystic Monastery. Comes to play tapped, and you can tap it for a blue, a red, or a white. We've got two of that. Uh, here's one of the uh, dual lands that gains you a life when it comes into play. So kind of like the Zendikar uh, dual lands, uh, a Swiftwater Cliffs. Here we get a Tranquil Cove, basically same thing, but produces white and blue. A Windscarred Crag. Now we get some basic lands, we get some basic islands, some basic mountains, and obviously some basic plains. 
Okay, now let's take a look at the rest of the cards in the deck. Here we have a Void Snare, uh, Oppressive Rays, Lightning Strike. Uh, here's the Jeskai Banner, kind of like uh, the Clue Stones from Dragon's Maze. Uh, three cost artifact. You can tap it for a blue, red, or a white, or you can pay a blue, red, and a white and tap it and sacrifice it to draw a card. We've got two of that. Uh, Crippling Chill. It's a three cost blue instant. Tap target creature. It doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step and draw a card. Not too bad. Uh, Divination. Solemn Offering. Uh, Winter Flame, it's a 3 cost instant, choose one or both, tap target creature, or Winter Flame deals 2 damage to target creature. That's not too bad for a 3 cost instant. Uh, here's the Jeskai Charm, um, cost 1 blue, 1 red, and 1 white, you get to choose one, uh, it's an instant by the way. Uh, put target creature on top of its owner's library, or Jeskai Charm deals 4 damage to target opponent, or creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1, and gain lifelink until end of turn. So overall, not too, too bad. Uh, here we have a Weave Fate, 4 cost instant, draw 2 cards. Smite the Monstrous, a 4 cost instant, destroy target creature with power 4 or greater. A Lava Axe, and that's it for the deck. So, uh, not too, too bad uh, stuff in this deck overall. Um, like I said, I feel like the Jeskai have the most underwhelming ability out of the five clans, but um, who knows, maybe we'll see some EDH decks, or even maybe, uh, you know, myself and Derek don't really play standard at all, but, uh, you know, maybe there'll be some standard decks that, uh, that play Jeskai stuff. But yeah, so that's the deck. Let's take a look at the booster packs, see what we get in those. So here's the first one in my intro pack. Let's crack it open and see what we get. <clears throat> Honestly, the this is the moment I look forward to the most when I crack open intro packs. Let's see, we're just going to probably just rip right to the rare. Here we get a High Sentinels of Arishin. It's a 4 cost, 3 4 flying bird soldier. Um, it gets plus 1 plus 1 for each other creature you control with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, and you can pay 4 to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature. Uh, so this appears to be an Abzan card. And we get a nice, cool little spirit token there. Okay, so. The first rare we got in our first booster pack was a High Sentinels of Arishin. Stick that guy right there for now. Oops. Sorry, I'm dropping things here. Apologies. Okay, let's take a look at the second booster pack and see what we pull in here. Again, probably just going to rip right to the rare of the pack, which is a Siege Rhino. And this is clearly an Abzan card because it's white, black, and green. Um, it is a 4 cost, 4 5 of Trample. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent loses 3 life and you gain 3 life. Uh, so that's, I think that's actually really good. Um, a 4 cost 4 5 with trample ain't bad on its own, but a 4 cost 4 5 with trample that drains every opponent for 3 and then you gain 3 uh, is pretty solid. And this pack feels like it has a foil. It does, but nothing too monumental. Uh, Hordling Outburst, it's an uncommon. And then we get a nice warrior creature token. So in our second pack, we got a Siege Rhino is our rare in our second booster pack. Okay, so that pretty much concludes uh, this unboxing of the Jeskai Monks intro pack from Cons of Tarkir. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. What's up guys, Jay here with Tap and Turn Gaming and welcome back to our channel for a unboxing video. Uh, this video will be taking a look at an intro pack from uh, Cons of Tarkir, but before I get into the actual unboxing, I would just like to uh, talk about the backdrop that I have for this video. 
Uh, Battleground Games and Hobbies is the local gaming store that Derek and I basically go to for all of our Magic the Gathering needs. Um, we have come to a, a partnership, so to say, uh, with the owner of Battleground Games and Hobbies, Derek Lloyd. Um, basically what our partnership kind of entails is, you know, we represent their store in our videos. Uh, we may end up filming some videos inside their store, uh, showing you guys around their store, maybe doing some unboxing or gameplay videos in their store. And, you know, they just, um... You know, they're going to let us have like, you know, maybe some business cards on their counters or, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, we gain awareness for them and they gain awareness for us. That's, you know, basically what our partnership is all about. But uh, Battleground Games and Hobbies is based out of Massachusetts in two locations in Abington and Plainville. So if you live in Massachusetts and you live somewhere around those two areas... Uh, check them out. Check out Battleground Games and Hobbies. They're a really great store. Um, and their website, uh, check it out, www.battlegroundgames.com. Uh, they have an online store for magic singles, you know, things like that. Um, I almost exclusively get all of my singles that I need from the Battlegrounds. Uh, it's just, I love going there. It's an excellent store. Uh, the owner, Derek Lloyd, he is just... He's awesome. Uh, he's just a great guy. Uh, all their employees are very nice. They're knowledgeable about the products. But yeah, um, so this is just me repping the Battlegrounds. Um, so yeah, check them out, Battleground Games and Hobbies, and also check out their website. But let's get into the unboxing here. Uh, we'll be taking a look at one of the intro packs from Cons of Tarkir. Uh, this particular one happens to be the Soltai. Uh, intro pack. So as you can see here, the uh, foil card that comes in this is a Rock Rakshasa Vizier. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but uh, you know he's a uh, he's a pretty cool card. Uh, he is of the Soltai clan. Uh, the clan's colors are black, green, and blue. Uh, but we'll take a look at this guy in more detail once we get this unboxed. And if you flip it around here, there's another picture of the uh, foil card that's in the front. Um, you know, just to kind of take a look at some of the stuff on here. Uh, you are a planeswalker. Choose a warrior clan and vie for supremacy in the Magic the Gathering, the world's premier trading card game. Rage through lush jungles and battle across the windswept steppes of Tarkir using your own combination of powerful spells and fierce creatures. Uh, and this is the Sultai Schemers intro pack. The Sultai seek to rule with ruthlessness and dark magic. Use the power of the graveyard to summon a legion of undead servants and subjugate the inferior clans. So, you know, pretty cool basis for a clan. Um, and as far as the contents go, you have a ready-to-play 60-card deck featuring a foil premium Rakshasa Vizier. Two kinds of Tarkir 15-card booster packs, which is... Pretty much what I got them for. Um, I just love cracking packs. Uh, a deck strategy insert and a rules reference card. So without further ado, let's crack this bad boy open and let's take a look at the deck. So here you have the 60 card ready to play deck with the Rakshasa Vizier. Here you have the two cons of Tarkir booster packs. Here you have the deck insert, uh, not really going to show off that, it's pretty self-explanatory, it's just, you know, gives you a list of the cards in the deck, um, and, you know, kind of a strategy on how to play it. And here you have the Magic Rules reference card. So, let's set these booster packs aside right here for right now. So, let's take a look at the deck first. Uh, first up we have the foil card, the Rakshasa Vizier, he's a 5 cost. 4-4 four, four, Cat Demon. Uh, whenever one or more cards are put into exile from your graveyard, put that many plus one plus one counters on Rakshasa Vizier. You know, so he's not too bad. Um, I actually did want to get the Mardu um, intro pack the most, but they unfortunately did not have any. Um, you know, so that's probably going to be one of the more popular clans, so it's going to be very sought after. So I wasn't able to get my hands on it, 
But, you know, I just wanted to get my hands on something to crack open for you guys, so this is one of them. So, let's, uh, let's open this up here and take a look at some of the other cards in this deck. So we've already taken a look at the Rakshasa Vizier. Next up is a Necropolis Fiend. He's a 9 cost 4-5 demon with Delve. Um, Delve actually was a mechanic, I believe, that was featured in Future Sight, and it is now back. Um, basically what Delve does is it lets you lower the cost of the card for each card you exile from your graveyard as you play this card. So this guy is a 9 cost, 4-5 with Delve. Uh, he has Flying, and you can pay X and tap him to exile X cards from your graveyard. Target creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn. So, you know, if you're abusing your graveyard and you don't mind exiling some stuff from your graveyard, he's not too bad. Uh, here we get a Typhoid Rats. You know, we got some, uh, some core set cards in here. I'm really just going to stop and, you know, talk about the new cards. You got a Black Cat, a Walking Corpse, a Seder Wayfinder, another Seder Wayfinder, uh, we get a Wall of Mulch, a Research Assistant, a Necromancer's Assistant, another one of that. And we have a Grave Digger. Uh, and they've actually changed his uh, rarity to an Uncommon, which is interesting. Uh, we get a Rot Feaster Maggot. Uh, here we have a new card, a Sultai Soothsayer. He's a 5 cost 2 5 Naga Shaman. Uh, whenever Sultai Soothsayer enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and the rest in your graveyard. So he's not too bad. Uh, if you're you know, really going for a theme of the Sultai uh, for your deck, uh, he's a pretty good card. He lets you, uh, you know, basically filter out cards, lets you put one in your hand and then the rest in your graveyard to maybe delve for something. So he's pretty cool, I guess. Here we have a Sultai Scavenger. He's a 6 cost, 3-3 three, three with Delve and Flying. Uh, so, you know, just a common. And we have another copy of that. Here we have Hooting Mandrels. Uh, it's a 6 cost, 4-4 four, four, Ape with Delve. Uh, and it has Trample. So, you know, that's... There's another one of that. Uh, we have Shambling Attendance. He's an 8 cost, 3-5 with Delve and Death Touch. Uh, and it is a Zombie. So uh, the Sultai are definitely into the Delve mechanic. Uh, here we have a Dual Land, a Dismal Backwater. Enters the battlefield tapped. When it comes in, you gain a life, and you can tap it for a blue or a black. Kind of like the uh, Zendikar Dual Lands that gained you life when they entered the battlefield. Uh, I guess just different colors with this set. So that's pretty cool. Then we have a Jungle Hollow, kind of the same thing comes into play tap, you gain a life when it comes in, and you can tap it for a black or a green. Here we have the tricolored land for the Salt Tie, an opulent palace, enters the battlefield tapped, and you can tap it for a black, a green, or a blue. Here we have another of that, uh, another one of the gain life lands that taps for a green and a blue. And then you get some basics here, you get some basic swamps, some basic forests, uh, some basic islands, and then there's some more cards uh, behind the lands. Here we have a de debilitating injury. Uh, it's a two cost enchantment aura. Uh, enchanted creature gets minus two, minus two. So that's not too bad. Uh, we get Tygom Scheming. It's a two cost blue sorcery. Look at the top five cards of your library, put any number of them into your graveyard, and the rest back on top of your library in any order. So, you know, if you're really looking to abuse that delve mechanic, uh, that's a pretty good card for you. It's another copy of that. Uh, we got the Soul Tie Banner, uh, which is kind of like the Clue Stones from Dragon's Maze. Um, they cost three, they're an artifact, they tap for all three colors of that clan, and then you can pay a color... Uh, one color of that clan's colors and tap it and sacrifice it to draw a card. And we got Rakshasa's Secret. It's a three cost black sorcery. Target opponent discards two cards. Put the top two cards of your library in your graveyard. 
And we get a Scout the Borders. It's a three cost green uh, sorcery. Reveal the top five cards of your library. You may put a creature or land card from among them in your hand, put the rest in your graveyard. So as you can see, the Sultai are all about abusing the graveyard and using the delve mechanic. Uh, here we got the Sultai Charm. Uh, costs one black, one green, and one blue. Uh, it's an instant, and you get to choose one of the following. Destroy target monocolored creature, destroy target artifact or enchantment, or draw two cards, then discard a card. So that's a pretty solid, uh, solid instant. You know, you either get to destroy a creature, destroy an artifact or an enchantment, or draw two cards and discard a card. So that's pretty cool. Here we get a Bitter Revelation. It's a four cost black sorcery. You look at the top four cards of your library, put two of them in your hand and the rest in your graveyard, you lose two life. Here we have a Murderous Cut. Uh, five cost black instant with delve. Destroy target creature. Um, so that's pretty good. Um, just a, a spell that can destroy any creature regardless of what color it is is always pretty nice. Um, and it also has delve. So, you know, another one of the cards that you can use that the Sultai, you know, like to use Delve. Uh, here we have Throttle. Let's say five cost black instant target creature gets minus four, minus four. Uh, so another kill spell. Uh, here we have a Become Immense, a six cost green instant with Delve. Target creature gets plus six, plus six until end of turn. Uh, here we have Set Adrift, a 6 cost blue sorcery with Delve. Put target non-land permanent on top of its owner's library. So, you know, again, you know, you can see that the Sultai are all about abusing the graveyard. Uh, here's another Delve card. Uh, an 8 cost blue sorcery, Treasure Cruise. With Delve, draw 3 cards. Uh, here we have Dead Drop, a 10 cost black sorcery with Delve, target player sacrifices two creatures. And that is it for the actual deck. Uh, so, you know, some, some pretty cool cards in there. Uh, honestly, I think the most impressive card was probably the Sultai Charm. Um, I mean, I am not myself a really big fan of the Delve mechanic myself, but, you know... I mean, it could be good. It probably won't be good and standard, I'd imagine. But, um, you know, if maybe if you're playing, you know, EDH and, you know, you have a deck that abuses the graveyard, uh, you know, maybe the uh, maybe the Sultai, you know, aren't a bad clan to, you know, throw some cards from their clan into your deck. But let's take a look at the two booster packs that we got. And this is what I was looking forward to. So let's crack open the first one here. See if we get some good stuff. <clears throat> Here, our first card is a Firehoof Cavalry. Uh, one cost one one. Human Berserker. You can pay four, and it gets plus two plus zero oh, and gains Trample. Uh, so that is probably a Mardu card. We get a Monastery Flock. Three cost zero five. Bird with Defender and Flying and more for one blue. Leaping Master. Two cost two one. You can pay two and a white, and he gains Flying. Uh, Molten Snake Skin, uh, one cost aura, black aura, uh, enchanted creature gets plus two plus O oh, and has pay two colorless and a black and regenerated, so that's not too bad. We get a Wooly Loxodon, a seven cost six seven with morph for five colorless and green. And we get another one of the gain life um, lands that produces red and green. Uh, we got a Sultai Banner, we already saw that. Uh, Force Away, two cost blue instant, return to our creature to its owner's hand with Ferocious. Uh, that's a teamer mechanic. Uh, if you control a creature with power four or greater, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. Another gain life land uh, that produces red and white. Uh, bring low, four cost, red instant. It deals three damage to our creature. If that creature has a plus one, plus one counter on it, bring low deals five damage to it instead. So that's not too bad. Uh, now we're into the uncommons. We get a timely horde mate. Uh, four cost, three, two with raid. So this is a Mardu card. 
When Timely Horde Mate enters the battlefield, if you attack with a creature this turn, return target creature card with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So that's that's pretty cool. Uh, we get another Opulent Palace. We saw that in the deck. A Nomad Outpost, which is the Mardu Tricolor Lane. I believe the next card's the Rare. Ooh, a C, the Unwritten. Uh, this card's really, really good. Um, it's a six-cost green sorcery. Uh, it's a Mythic Rare, so our first card is a Mythic Rare, which is pretty cool. Uh, reveal the top eight cards of your library. You may put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest into your graveyard. With Ferocious, uh, if you control a creature with power four or greater, you may put two creature cards onto the battlefield instead of one. Uh, that's a really, really good card, especially for EDH, because um, it's pretty damn easy to have a creature on the board with four or more power in EDH. So this is this card's really, really good. And then you get a planes and a an insert card. So our first uh, rare in our booster pack and the from the intro packs is a See the Unwritten, which is a green mythic rare, and it's really, really good, I think. Okay, so that's our first booster pack from this intro deck. Let's take a look at what we get in the second booster pack. <clears throat> uh, here we have a Sage Eye Harrier, 5 cost 1 5 flyer with morph for 3 colors and a white, pretty basic there. Uh, Weave Fate, uh, 4 cost blue instant, draw 2 cards, not too bad. Bloodfire Expert, 3 cost 3 1 with Prowess. Prowess is the, um, the Jeskai um, ability. Uh, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, this creature gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. Um, I think it's probably the most underwhelming ability, honestly. Um, but, you know, maybe it'll be good, maybe it won't, I don't know. You'll have to see it in, in action, I suppose. Uh, here we have Savage Punch, a two-cost green sorcery. Target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. And if you're ferocious, uh, the creature you control gets plus two, plus two until end of turn before it fights if you control a creature with power four or greater. Uh, we saw this card already, Debilitating Injury. A Summit Prowler. He's a four-cost four-three. Just a vanilla four-cost four-three. <laughs> Another Sultai Banner. A Alabaster Kieran, 4 cost, 2-3 with Flying and Vigilance, that's not too bad. Uh, the Blue-Green Gain Lifeland. A Jeskai Wind Scout, 3 cost, 2-1 with Flying and Prowess. We're into the Uncommons now, Dragon Grip. Uh, it's a 3 cost Red Aura. Uh, if you're Ferocious, if you control a creature with Power 4 or Greater, you may cast Dragon Grip as though it had Flash, which is pretty cool. Uh, an Enchanted Creature gets plus 2, plus 0, oh, and has First Strike, so that's pretty cool. Uh, we get an Abzan Falconer, uh, 3 cost 2, 3 with Outlast, that's the Abzan mechanic. Basically what it does is let you pay the cost and you can put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on the creature, um, and you can only do that as a sorcery. Um, but, you know, he has Outlast for 1 white, and then it says each creature you control with a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it has Flying is pretty good. Uh, here we have Raider's Spoils. It's a four cost black enchantment. Creatures you control get plus one plus oh. And whenever a warrior you control deals combat damage to a player, you may pay one life if you do draw a card. So I'd imagine this is a Mardu card. And the rare we got is Trap Essence. Uh, it's a three cost instant that's a teamer card. Counter target spell, put two plus one plus one counters on up to one target creature. So that's not too bad, that's our rare. And then we get a forest and an insert card. So that is it for the unboxing of the Sultai uh, intro pack that I purchased. Um, overall, pretty good stuff in it, uh, at least in the booster packs anyways, the, uh, the CV Unwritten uh, is a really nice pull. This card's really, really good. Um, that was in our first booster pack, and then in our second one we got a Trap Essence, uh, which isn't too bad. So, those are our two rares from our booster packs. And, yeah, that's basically it. 
What's up guys, Jay here with Tap and Turn Gaming coming at you with another unboxing video. Uh, this video we'll be taking a look at another one of the cons of Tarkir intro packs. Uh, and this one will be the Abzan intro pack. Um, <clears throat> so we'll take a look at the uh, front and center card here. We got an Ivory Tusk Fortress. Uh, it's a 5 cost, let's see, 5 7 elephant creature. And you get to untap each creature you control, the plus one, plus one counter on it, um, during each other player's untap step. So that's pretty cool. So that's the uh, front and center card we have here in the Abzan intro pack. Uh, just to quickly take a look at the back here. I'm um, not going to read this, but let's take a look at uh, what it says about this deck. Abzan Siege. The Abzan rely on endurance and fortitude to outlast the other clans. Build a resilient army, survive your enemy's rash attacks, and then march to an eventual victory. <clears throat> uh, and as far as the contents go, you get the 60 card deck, you get the foil premium ivory tusk fortress, two cons of Tarkir 15 card booster packs, a deck strategy insert, and a rules reference card. So, pretty much the same stuff as all the other ones, except you get a different card, obviously. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's crack this open and take a look at the deck. So here you have the 60 card deck. Uh, you got the two cons of Tarkir booster packs. Here you got the deck strategy insert. Not really going to take a look at this because it's pretty pretty massive but basically it's just got the deck list and you know a strategy on how to play the Abzan clan and there you get the rules reference card okay so let's stick the booster packs right here for right now and let's take a look at the deck uh, we've already taken a look at ivory tusk fortress so let's uh, let's crack this open and see what the rest of the deck has to offer Oop. Apologies there. Uh, there's the Ivory Tusk Fortress. Uh, the other rare in the deck is a High Sentinels of Arishin. It's a 4 cost 3 4 bird soldier with flying. Uh, High Sentinels of Arishin gets plus 1 plus 1 for each other creature you control with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. And you can pay 4 to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature. So that's pretty good. Um, you know, this guy gets stronger for every creature that you have with a plus one, plus one counter on it, and he has the ability to let you put plus one, plus one counters on things. So he's pretty cool. Here we get a Disowned Ancestor. It's a one cost 04 with Outlast for a Colas and a Black. Um, so basically, Outlast works. Um, you can pay its Outlast cost, and you essentially just put a plus one, plus one counter on the creature, and you can only do that as a sorcery. Um, so the Abzan are all about uh, enduring and outlasting, basically, uh, everybody else. So there's Disowned Ancestor. There's another copy of him. Uh, we got an Anok Boin... I'm sorry. <laughs> Anok Bondkin. Uh, a 2 cost 2-1 Hound Soldier with Outlast for a Colas and a White. Um, and each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it has First Strike. So that's pretty cool. We get a second one of him, a third one of him. Uh, here we get some uh, core set cards. We get a Sun Grace Pegasus, a Child of Night, another Child of Night, uh, an Abzan Falconer, uh, three cost, two, three without last for one white. Each creature you control, the plus one, plus one counter on it has flying. That's pretty cool. Another one of that guy. Uh, we get a Tusk Guard Captain, a 3 cost 2 3 with Outlast for 1 green. Each creature you control with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it has Trample. That's pretty good. We got another one of that. Uh, we got an Abzan Battle Priest, a 4 cost 3 2 with Outlast for 1 white. Each creature you control with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it has Life Link. So as you can see, the uh, Abzan are all about making their creatures slowly stronger and stronger as the game progresses and uh, a lot of the creatures, you know, give all your other creatures a really cool ability if they have plus one, plus one counters on them. So, you know, I think the Abzan are pretty cool. Uh, we get a Razorfoot Griffin, a core set card. Uh, we get a Salt Road Patrol, a four cost, two five, without last for a uh, one Colas and a white. 
Uh, yeah, another one of that. Uh, Murek Nightblade. It's a four cost two three with Outlast for one black. Each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it has Death Touch. Um, so for the most part, this deck has uh, a creature that gives all your creatures an ability if they have count, uh, counters on them. This guy did Death Touch. We saw one that did Flying. We saw one that did Life Link. We saw one that did Trample. Um, so you know, pretty. Pretty cool stuff here so far. Uh, we get a long shot squad, uh, four cost three three with outlast for a colus and a green. Each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it has reach. We get another one of that. Uh, we get an armament corpse, uh, five cost four four. When it enters the battlefield, distribute two plus one plus one counters among one or two target creatures you control. So it just enables, you know, your outlast mechanic more and beefs up your creatures if you have those other creatures that give your creatures abilities if they have counters on them. Uh, Carnivorous Moss Beast. Here we got one of the gain life lands that produces green and white. Uh, another one that produces black and green. Uh, here we got the Abzan Tricolor Land, Sand Step Citadel. Produces white, uh, white, black, and green. Comes to play tapped. We got another one of that. Uh, another one of the gain life lands that produces white and black. And then we got some basic planes, some basic mount, uh, sorry, basic swamps, sorry, basic forests. And we got some more cards behind these. Let's take a look at those. Uh, we got a suspension field that's a two cost white enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you may exile target creature with toughness three or greater until suspension field leaves the battlefield. Uh, so it's more or less kind of like a. Uh, like a journey to nowhere, uh, just that targets creatures with toughness three or greater. Uh, so, I mean, that's very flavorful for the Abzan, because they're all about making their creatures more menacing as the game goes on. So this is kind of an enchantment that goes, hey, your creature is almost as big as mine or bigger. Well, we're going to make you go away, because we don't want you to be bigger than us. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Eternal Thirst, another core set card. We get the Abzan Banner, you know, three cost artifact. It taps for um, a white, a black, or a green, and you can play, uh, excuse me, you can pay white, black, and green and tap it and sacrifice it to draw a card. So kind of like, you know, the clue stones from Dragon's Maze. We get another one of that. Uh, we get a Kill Shot, three cost white instant, destroy target attacking creature. Another one of that. Uh, we get the Abzan Charm, uh, white, black, green, uh, instant. You can choose one of the following. Uh, exile, target creature with power three or greater. Uh, you draw two cards and you lose two life or distribute two plus one plus one counters among one or two target creatures. So definitely not bad. Here you get a Dragon Scale Boon. It's a four cost green instant. Put two plus one plus one counters on target creature and untap it. Uh, then we get a Hunt the Week, another core set card. Flesh to Dust, another core set card. And an Incremental Growth. Um, I believe this is a reprint. Um, yes, yes it is. Five cost, green, sorcery. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Two plus one, plus one counters on another target creature. And three plus one, plus one counters on a third target creature. So that is the Abzan deck. Overall, pretty cool deck as far as I'm concerned. Um, you know, if you start putting Outlast counters on your on your creatures and you drop some of those other creatures that give your creatures abilities, um, if they have counters on them, you know, you can uh, you can definitely start generating a pretty menacing army. But let's take a look at the two booster packs that we got uh, in the intro packs. That's what I'm, you know most excited about cracking open so let's crack open the first one here and see what we get uh we get an a uh, sage eye harrier a weave fate blood fire expert smoke teller sultai scavenger uh black red gain life land mystic of the hidden way Summit Prowler, <laughs> a Sultai Banner. Um, if you guys saw the uh, 
saw the intro pack that I opened that what had the Sultai deck in it. Both booster packs that I cracked open had Sultai banners in them, so I've already got almost a playset of Sultai banner. <laughs> uh, we got an Alabaster Kieran. Uh, we're into the Uncommons now. Mardu Heart Piercer. A Briber's Purse. A Mardu Rough Rider. And a Rakshasa Vizier, which was actually the uh, the foil card for the Sultai deck. Um, so he's a 5 cost 4-4 four, four. whenever one or more cards are put in exile from your graveyard. Put that many plus one plus one counters on Rakshasa Vizier. I mean, he's okay. And then we get a Mountain and a uh, Soren Emblem. Uh, Soren's Ultimate uh, Sorum Solemn Visitor, I believe uh, he's called in this set. Uh, but this is a emblem token. Uh, his emblem is at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep that player sacrifices a creature. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so our rare and booster pack number one was a Rakshasa Vizier. Not too good, not too bad either. But let's see what we get in booster pack number two. And our first card is a Sultai card, uh, Treasure Cruise. We get a Mardu War Shrieker. A Bitter Revelation. We get a Kin Tree Warden. Bloodfire Mentor. Lens of Clarity. A War Behemoth. Uh, the black white gain a life land embodiment of spring act of treason that's a reprint uh, we're into the uncommons now we get a pine walker uh, seeker of the way air of the wilds and the next cards are rare another trap essence <laughs> Uh, I opened a Trap Essence in the Sultai uh, intro pack, so I have two of these now. I mean, it's not a bad card, I just, you know, out of, you know, that many booster packs, I opened the same card twice, which is kind of frustrating, but, you know, well, it wouldn't be frustrating if it was a really, really good card that I would like to play, but... And then you have a Mountain and a Snake Token. So, that is the... Uh, Abzan intro pack that we just cracked open uh, and the two rares that we got in our booster packs were a Rakshasa Vizier and a Trap Essence uh, and then as far as the rares go again uh, for the actual Abzan deck that uh, came in it we get a High Sentinels of Arishin and an Ivory Tusk Fortress so that concludes the unboxing for this intro pack. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Also, uh, check out Battleground Games and Hobbies. Uh, it's our local gaming store that we go to to fulfill all of our magic needs. Also, check out their website, www.battlegroundgames.com. But yeah, this has been Jay with Tap and Turn Gaming. Hope you guys enjoyed the video again, uh, and we will catch you later in a future video.